Hello everyone and in this particular video I'm going to show you that how you can use the Flutter framework to create a network request to do a network request fetch all the JSON and then display it in a list control. Now we will be using the Batman or from the OMDB API. Uh, you can sign up for your API key and this is a URL. If we go to this URL, you can see that it returns you the Batman movies with the title, with the year, the, and also the poster. So we want to display all of this information into our list control. Currently, we don't have anything. You can see on the right hand side, this is what our page actually looks like. So the first thing we're going to do is create some sort of a class where we can get all the JSON and then put it on the class. So basically map the JSON into the class. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new file over here and I will call it movie.dart. This is simply a movie file or a movie class. And now we can go ahead and declare different properties. So I'm going to go ahead and say final and then maybe the title of the movie because we have the title coming from JSON. So the title is fine. Make a string. And then I will also create some sort of a poster. And now I can create a constructor which is going to take in the title and which is going to take in the poster. Great. So now I can go back into and create a new file for web service. This web service will be responsible for fetching or loading all the movies. I'm going to call this a web service. Web service. Inside the web service, I'm going to go ahead and create a function. We'll put it void for now, but eventually we will update that. And I will just call it load movies. And that's pretty much it. So the question is, how would we load the movies? What do we need to load the movie? So it's obviously you need the, some sort of a URL, which we already have. Okay. And in order to make a movie request, you need a package that will allow you to do HTTP request. And that package or one of those packages is called HTTP package. So if you simply search for HTTP package Flutter, you can go to pub.dev and install this particular package. Simply click on the installation on installing and this is actually the package. You need to add this into your pubspec.yaml file. So right over here on line number 25, where I'm using the Cupertino package, I can also add the HTTP package, which will allow me to do networking requests and I'm going to save it. Now I'm using Visual Studio Code. So whenever I save it, it tries to download and install the package. So hopefully that package will already be installed. If you need more information about how to use the package and what to do, you can simply go to pub.dev and search for the package that you're looking for, which in this case is HTTP package. So the first thing I need will be the import statement if I need to obviously import and start using the package. So I'll go to my web service and I will try to import the HTTP package, which is going to allow me to perform HTTP request. Now I can say HTTP.get and I can pass in the URL. Now HTTP.get is a going to return you a future of response. In order to evaluate the future, I can go ahead and say dot then, but I can also use async and await. The await can only be used if your function is marked with async. So let's go ahead and mark this with async. So this is going to return you some sort of a response. Now we can check that if the response dot status is equals to 200, then we can do something else. Well, 
else we can simply throw the exception for now. So we can say throw exception and we can say error loading movies or something like that. Now if it is 200, meaning it is successful, then we can actually use a conversion to convert it into a JSON object. All right, so if the status is successful, we can use the response.body, and now we, need, we can actually call JSON decode function, which is part of the dart convert, and pass in the response body to that function. This is going to give us some sort of an object which we can use further on. So we can say JSON. Great. Now, once we have that particular object, what we need, you can see over here in the actual implementation of the JSON response, we are mainly looking for the search key, which consists of an array. The question is, how can we access that particular search key? So once we got the JSON response back, we are looking for the search key. So we can simply say, we're looking for search. And we also know that the search, the value of the search key is actually an array of movies or an array of dictionaries. So we can go over here and we can say iterable and we'll have some sort of a list. This is going to return us a list, something that we can iterate on. This means that I can go ahead and say dot map function over here. I will get access to each item. And using the item that I receive, I can call something to create an instance of something else, which means that in this case, I can actually go ahead and create a movie. But in order to create a movie object from an item, I need to go back to my movie class and make sure that I update the movie class and make it a factory. This means now I can say movie.fromjson, where you will pass in a map, which is kind of like a dictionary, which contains a string and the value can be dynamic. We can call it JSON. And now we can go ahead and return a movie where the title of the movie will be JSON coming from the title with a capital T, because if you see over here in JSON, the title is with a capital T. And the second parameter is the poster, which is also with a capital P. So there we go. The factory function is used to create an instance of the movie object. As you can see, we are returning a new movie object, which is based on the map that you have passed. And we are extracting the value from the title and poster. If you like, you can extract the value of IMDB ID and type and year also, but we are simply limiting down to title and poster. Now we can go back over here and let's see if we can actually call this movie dot. So let's go ahead and say movie. So we'll say movie, press enter so that your movie class is automatically imported dot from JSON. Great. And now we can pass in the item. Now this is going to return us some iterable, so we can actually go ahead and call to list to make sure that we're converting it correctly. And let's go ahead and return it. Now you'll see that right now we have a void return. We can change that to a future, that we're gonna be returning a future return, which will be a list of movie object. Great. Now we can go ahead and actually go ahead and test it out. Once we return a list of movies, what we want to do is to put it in the state. The first question is that where are we going to call the load movies function, which is part of the web service class? If I go back to my main.dart, you will notice that right now our 
app component is actually the state list component. So let's go ahead and make this the app state underscore and state. And this is going to be using or maintaining the state of the app component, which by the way doesn't exist right now, but not to worry, we're just going to create that a state full component. The only function that we need to implement is the create state. So let's go ahead and call it create state. And this is going to return an app state. Perfect. In the underscore app state, we can actually go ahead and implement init state function. The init state is called when it's initializing the state. And this is our opportunity to go ahead and also load other components. So I can actually say load all the movies or load movies. And now I can go ahead and create this particular function, which will be responsible for loading the movies. So load, load movies. And we will mark this with async. And we will await for web service dot load movies. This is going to return us something, most probably movies. So let's go ahead and say movies or even results if you want to. Now, in order to load up our list, we want to put the result in some sort of a movies collection or an array. So I'm going to go ahead and create a movie list and I will call it movies. I will also go ahead and maybe initialize it with empty movies. So movie and we'll initialize it with nothing. Make sure that we implement the movies or import the movie package. Great. And now finally, I'm going to call set state and set the movies to the results. Anytime anything is set within the set state, it's going to fire the build function again. This means this is our opportunity to create and or refresh the interface. Right now, we don't even have a list. So let me go ahead and remove the text from the body and call list view.builder. The list view.builder is going to take multiple arguments. One of them will be an item count, which we can say underscore movies.length. The second one will be an item builder, which will be a build context and the index. Now we can use these two things to create every single tile or row of the list view. So I can go ahead and say list tile. And in the list tile, I can go ahead and say title would be text and it will be movies of index. This is basically saying that we are going to go to movies.index and we are going to get the title of the movie. Perfect. We also have the URL to the poster of the movie, which we can use as a leading. So leading image dot network and passing in the movies of index dot poster. Let's go ahead and save it and do a hard restart, which you can see the refresh button and see if it actually fetches the movies. And there you go. It actually fetches the movies from the URL and displays it in our list view control. So it wasn't that bad. I mean, we implemented our movies and we fetched the data from the network and we were able to display it in a list view control. And the great thing is that this is going to work on Android devices also, and it's going to look great on both the platforms. And it's going to run very, very fast because of how the Flutter architecture is set up. So that's pretty much it. I hope you have really enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe to the channel because this video is part of my upcoming course on Flutter, which is for 
intermediate and advanced developers, and we will cover a lot more stuff in my new course. If you want to support my YouTube channel, then the best way would be to go to Udemy and check out my courses. I just released a new course on the Combined Framework, and I also have courses on the Swift UI declarative interfaces for Apple device. Apart from that, I have courses on data structures and algorithms, design patterns, server-side Swift, and much, much more. The best way to get these courses is to use the links in the description of the YouTube video. So please go ahead and click and use the links in the description of the video and get the courses. Thank you so much, and I really hope that you enjoyed this video.